Hello, praise the Lord. We're going to be talking about the peace that God wants us to have. Uh, the peace that God speaks about. All right, so John 16.33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So right there we see Jesus. He talks about how in him we will have peace. Not in the world. That's why God says, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If the world brought true peace, God wouldn't say not to love them. Um, so in the world, we're going to have tribulation, not peace. But only in Jesus Christ can someone have peace. So, you know, Matthew 5, 9, when it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. This isn't talking about people that compromise to make people feel good and not and to not cause a stir. This is talking about the true peacemakers who bring the word of God, because there can't be peace unless everyone is serving the God of the Bible. If there's people not serving the God of the Bible, there's not going to be peace. They're wicked. That's why God sends people to hell, because... They don't have peace. And guess what? In heaven, all there is going to be is holiness. You know, Jesus says that he didn't come to bring peace on earth. He came to bring fire. He came to divide. He came to bring a sword. Some of the things that Jesus and the apostles said in the New Testament, some of you fake Jezebel and Ahab, quote-unquote Christians, you would, you would have problems with Jesus and some of the apostles. You would say, that's not very peaceful. That's not very loving. How? Why would you say that? All right, you need to get this straight in your head. You know, when you read the full word of God, you know, constantly, it's, you, it's not the art to understand this. God's peace is not the same peace as the world's peace. That's why it says God's ways are not our ways. Just like how it says, Jesus says to love your neighbors. Loving your neighbors doesn't mean putting up with their sin. In fact, what's loving, what's actually Loving is rebuking them and telling them the truth. That's why it says open rebuke is better than secret love. See, God's ways are not sinners' ways. All right. All right, let's read Luke 12, 49 through 53. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straight until it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So a lot of soft, weak people that aren't strong in the Lord, they'll go straight to obey your parents. Well, according to Jesus Christ, if your parents are going against what God is telling you, you go against them. You put God first. That's why in the book of Acts, they said a few times, I think it's in there at least two times where they say, we need to obey God rather than men. They didn't listen to the people that were telling them to shut up and to not talk about Jesus. I want to remind you, they caused no small stir. Those are the true peacemakers. Peacemakers, according to God, aren't the people that compromise to make people feel better. Pe peacemakers, according to God, are those that cause no small stir. Jesus says that offenses must come, but woe to that man who is offended. It doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say, woe to the man 
who is who is offending jesus doesn't say woe to the man who's offending people jesus says woe to the man whom those offenses come to woe to the people who get offended Romans 12.18 says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. If it's possible, praise the Lord, be at peace with them. If they're not going against God and you're able to work things out, uh, uh, serving the God of the Bible and they're serving God and there's not sin going on, praise the Lord. If possible, see it says here, if possible, be at peace with all men. It says, if possible, it doesn't say to compromise the word of God. It doesn't say, make sure you don't offend anybody. Remember, Jesus says that John the Baptist was the greatest among all men. And John the Baptist, he offended people. That's why he got killed. Jesus offended people. Jesus caused no small stir. That's why they killed Jesus. According to some of you people, the way you think, Jesus wasn't a peacemaker. Paul wasn't a peacemaker. The two witnesses, when they come and they're, and they're given power to breathe fire on those that come against them, according to the way you think, lukewarm Christian, they're not peacemakers. They're hateful, unloving, ungodly. Well, according to God, those are the types of people that are peacemakers. Remember, God's ways are not our ways. His ways aren't the same ways as a, as a sinner. All right? So, when someone gets born again, they have a change of mind. They realize that peace is not what they thought it was before. They realize that love wasn't what they thought it was before. That's why it says to be conformed. Your mind needs to be conformed to the word of God, not to the sinful, false, peaceful ways of the world. That's why it's called getting born again. Galatians 5.12 Now I want to remind you, for all you people that think, um, you know, we're supposed to just love now since we're in the period of grace. We're only supposed to say loving things. Well, yeah, amen. But what is loving to you? What is loving to you? Remember, God's ways are not our ways. The Bible says that Jesus Christ does not change and that open rebuke is better than seek love carefully concealed. And uh, uh, 1 Timothy 5.20, it says, those that sin rebuke in the open. This is what Paul says. Remember, you know, Paul is a man of God, guys. He, he wrote a lot of the books in the New Testament. So let's see, you know, Paul must have been a pretty uh, big and good peacemaker, you know, if the Holy Spirit led him to write all those, all those epistles and... Uh, yeah, let's see what Paul says in Galatians 5.12. He's writing uh, concerning about these uh, people that have crept in and have turned believers to false teachings, certain things that are contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul says to concerning those people that are bringing in um, heresies, false uh, doctrine. This is what he says. I wish that those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves. He's saying, I wish that they would cut off their penis, their balls. Paul doesn't say, oh, God bless them. May God bless them in all their ways. Paul doesn't say, God be with them. Let's just pray for them. No, Paul says a little bit more than that. He says, I wish that those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves. Because the people that they were dealing with in uh, the church of Glacier during this time, why the re one of the reasons why Paul wrote this letter was because 
they were uh, trying to get them um, back under uh, uh, under um, you know circumcision of the flesh uh, is necessary for salvation and the other things that go contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're trying to put a bond on them again that uh, was not according to the gospel. And that's what Paul said to, the, said to them. And, you know, if, praise the Lord, guys, you know, Paul was a peacemaker if anyone was, all right? According to the way a lot of people think and talk, you know, Jesus, Paul, and John the Baptist, they were not good peacemakers. But according to God, those are our, uh, our examples. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 6 says, um, it, it talks about how love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. I think one translation says love does not rejoice in iniquity. Charity does not rejoice in iniquity, I think uh, it says in a, one translation. But it rejoices with the truth. You know, you see, guys, that verse, it's right there. There is not going to be true peace unless everyone is serving God, unless there's only peace for those that obey the truth. So when it says, blessed are the peacemakers, it's not talking about those that get along with ungodly people that suppress the truth to get along, that are ashamed of God's word and don't bring up Jesus Christ to get along with them and to be friends with everybody. Remember, the, God says not to be friends with sinners if you're a believer in Christ. It says, what part does a believer have with an unbeliever? Praise God. Only time, only way there's going to be peace uh, is if you tell people the truth, if people obey the truth. There's not going to be peace if you ignore what the Bible says in you and you're, and everyone's comfortable in their sin. That's not peace. There's a warfare going on and there's demons all around that people. There's not peace with that. It's kind of just like how Jesus, he's coming down to kill sinners. He's not coming back to give sinners a hug and say, let's make peace. He's coming back to kill wicked sinners. The blood is going to be to the horse's bridle. If you think Jesus got soft, everybody, in the, in the New Testament, you need to read the book of Revelation. You need to read the Gospels, for goodness sakes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah.